Well, the original idea of using the TR6 mounting bracket was an epic fail. <laughs> uh, it, it would work great if it was a right-hand drive car, but uh, with a left-hand drive, I'm dealing with the master cylinders sitting up on this shelf, and the bracket just won't fit. So plan B is going to be to incorporate the original mounting bracket with a plate on the top of it, if I can get this motor to fit here. So that's what I'm going to try now. It's just to load this in here. I can't believe how much easier it is to watch my watch. Excuse my hands here. I'm trying to get this thing to whirl. There we go. Oh, look at that. Well, that's going to fit great. Let's see if I can get up here and sh show you. I don't know if you can see it, but the nut is set up perfectly there to line up. So all I have to do then is make a bracket to mount that, the, the, a plate to mount the, uh, the go between the motor and the existing bracket, and I'll be all set. Okay, so I started making my template. This is just cardstock that I bought at the uh, Hobby Lobby and uh, what I've done here is get the general shape the initial shape of of, of the uh, template here I don't know if I can get a better shot here let me see okay so it basically basically follows the the curve of the firewall here and is parallel with the edge of the mounting or the mounting bracket for the uh, uh, master cylinders and I Roughly, just roughly, you kind of press down on the metal underneath here on the original mounting bracket to locate my perimeter of where um, that bracket is. So, what I'm going to do first is cut this in this initial shape, and uh, then I think, well, let me just do that first. I'll, I'll just cut this shape and we'll see how that fits. Okay, here's my initial piece. It's uh, all cut to size, so that's going to go in there like that, okay? So, um, what I think I'm going to do next, I have to locate those holes. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put contact cement on here, contact cement on here, line it up, take the, take it you know, attach these together so they're stuck together and then remove the whole thing and drill it. So um, I think that's probably the easiest way to make sure I get this, the holes registered in the same spot. So to take this bolt out too. I guess that's another thing. I'll, I'll have to drill a clearance hole to get to this bolt here. Or maybe not. No, I don't think I will. Just be a another stage in the assembly. Okay, stand by. Okay, here's my contact cement. Let's lather this on here. Okay, and then I'll put some on the other piece, stick them together, or wait 15 or 20 minutes and stick them together and I should be all set. Okay, so I have the adhesive on. It's been a few minutes, so we'll try it. Let's see if I can get this on here to where it'll stick. It's staying? I think it is. Okay. Cool. So I'll just take the bracket loose from the inside and we should be good to go. Okay, so now I have the bracket and the adapter plate on the workbench here and just shopping for some areas to uh, possibly put a fastener. So I'm thinking what I'll do since they're they're 
uh, flathead screws are going to be flush with the surface. So I think I'm going to put drop one of them in there, one of them in there, and one of them right there. So those should be out of the way of the motor on this side. So uh, that'll work. Okay. Well, I can't find my center punch, so that'll be, this will be fun. Okay, so that's one. I guess it isn't so bad. It's not that they have to be super precise or anything. Okay, so I'll come back when I get it set up for the next part. So I have the holes drilled for the three captive nuts. They're going to go in there like that. Um, here's the tool. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of big. <laughs> so anyway, you just basically screw this on the end here. And you stick it in the all the way in the hole here. And then just compress. Jesus. Compress the two together. And then this unscrews. And there you have it. Captive fastener. These things are slick. So, there's our three fasteners. And I bought two different length screws. I got some, uh, I think these are, what are these? Those are like half inch maybe. I think these are three quarters. But it just has to go into the aluminum, so we'll see which one. I'm thinking it doesn't really matter because I got enough room behind it here where, you know, I can put either one of these in here. So. Okay, so there's that part done. So now what I have to do is drill these for a clearance for a, a, a quarter twenty or quarter inch screw, and then countersink the top so the these these heads will be flush. So I, I think I'll be in pretty good shape there. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up. Okay. So, brackets all, or the adapter's all done. Well, it's roughed out. I gotta cut the shape and um, mount or locate the strap for the motor mount. But uh, let's see how this goes here. They're nice and flush. They should be. I got a brand new countersink tool. $19. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, anyway, that part works. So I have my adapter plate bolted to the original bracket. And uh, let's go put it in the car. Okay, I remounted the original wiper motor bracket. And I got my plate ready to go here. I had to make another little modification on this side here. So, yeah, we should be in good shape now.
This one's going to be a little... Oh, there we go. Okay. I guess I could use um, socket head calf screws. That way I could use a Allen wrench with a ball end on it to get that inside one. But, I mean, how many times am I going to take this off? Hopefully not much. <laughs> Okay, so that's that's a pretty sturdy mount there. So uh, let me go grab the motor and put it back in just loosely here, and we'll see uh, how we can position the strap and everything. Then I can do my once I get the strap defined and the and the holes for that, then I can finish the final contour of the thing because it looks pretty dorky right now. So oh well, somehow or other, I kind of screwed up. I'm not, it's kind of hard to show on the camera here, I guess, but uh, this, if you look at this angle here, I wanted that to come straight out parallel with this, this bracket, and somehow it didn't, because there's, there's not, I don't think there's enough there to put the clamp on the motor to hold it, and there's a ton of material over here, so um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of, uh, uh, maybe a new template or something and cut another piece oh well we'll get right, it stay with dave's tr uh working on the, uh, episode two of uh my mounting bracket for this motor uh, this is the next shape that i came up with for the bracket um, as you see on the first one it didn't quite work very well so this gets us more into where it's uh up against that or pretty close to the mounting bracket for the uh, master cylinders there. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt this in and we'll go uh, see if I'll probably put the motor back in and see how it looks. Okay, after about this is rev three of the bracket. <laughs> um, I have a paper pattern that's sitting on top of the rev two plate. And, um, and the, what happened was I uh, neglected to allow enough room around here to uh, get some threads for the, uh, the the strap, the motor strap on that side. This side's got a ton of room. So, uh, plus I have, a, there's a whole lot of extra material here. I don't know if I want to keep that or not. I don't know if it adds any strength to it. You know, I might be able to cut this down a little bit, bring this around, and this can be more, more along the, the, uh, the angle of the, the motor. So, I might do that too, but anyway, it looks like this is it. So uh, I'm gonna break out the old uh, saber saw and cut out hopefully the final piece. So wish me luck. Okay, it looks like version three is a winner. <laughs> um, so I drilled the holes, a pilot hole for the the bracket. So those are in too. Uh, I think I'm just going to add a, another uh, one of those captive nuts on each side and just use a, a quarter uh, 20 bolt to uh, hold that br this clamp down. So anyway, um, it's all hooked up. I don't know if you can see. That's bolted up, so that's clearanced right. Um, so yeah, I just have to clean it up some. It's got some rough edges there. So just a little file work and uh, add those two fasteners one up there and then one down here and uh, I think that'll be it so uh, but I think I will once I get it done I'll just make a uh, final template of it so if anybody's interested in doing this again I can just shoot you a copy or something so uh, assuming you're gonna do the same thing I don't know <laughs> depends on how much you want to drive end up driving your car in the rain I guess so uh, not that we all want to, but with the wife with me this summer, I don't want to... I'm wet! I can't see! <laughs> anyway, uh, stay tuned for the next point portion, which is going to be... Uh, well, I'll come back with a picture of the final piece, and then uh, it's on to the electrical portion. Well, here's the finished product, and i got to say I'm pretty happy with it <laughs> overall for, you know, a complete... Uh, amateur with basic hand tools in my garage here uh, so it's basically an eighth inch plate aluminum plate I don't know what grade it is but uh, 
it's uh, fairly soft, I think. Um, and then I have the three countersunk holes there that I located in both this and the original TR4 wiper uh, motor bracket. And then these two captive nuts will attach the motor to the plate. Um, I'll say it's a good thing I bought two uh, one foot square pieces because I ended up uh, with a few uh, pieces of scrap <laughs> where I hadn't taken into account uh, everything that had to be done on this thing. The biggest problem was, was getting enough material to actually uh, be able to bolt the strap uh, for the motor to this plate. So there's just not a lot of room there. So anyway, I'm going to uh, go ahead and put this in the car. Okay, so one last thing that I have to do before I put this uh, motor in the car is I got my new wire harness from Advanced Auto Wire. I'll tell you, this wire is just awesome. And I got 10 feet, which ought to be way more than I need, hopefully. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I got some of this 3M um, Super 33 electrical tape. And so I'm just going to wire, or, you know, make a loom of this to go down. Because I still have to pick up the wire for the uh, windshield washer, which is going to be this color. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Plug the harness into the. Uh, that's about as far as I'm. I'm just going to wire this down, maybe two feet, or not wire it, but wrap it, and then um, stop until I get to that stage of the of the installation. But I have to plug this into the motor before I mold it down. Well, I can't believe I don't have quarter 20 bolts, but that's what I need to attach the uh, bracket, <clears throat> the hold down bracket or strap, I guess, for the motor. Uh, other than that, the mechanical portion of this, this uh, upgrade is done. So, uh, I guess that's all until I can start working on the electrical part. It's probably going to be a few days. So, uh, anyway, uh, hope this helps and maybe give somebody... Uh, uh, some ideas on how they can improve their car. I feel like I should touch on base on what tools I ended up actually using and uh, the biggest heartache was cutting the shape in the aluminum since it's kind of thick. Uh, I tried cut off wheels and all sorts of things and it was just a total nightmare and then I remembered I had this little gem. It's even got a laser on the front so uh, and it's just a, a, a metal cutting blade and it, it goes through aluminum even that eighth inch stuff like uh, hot hot knife through butter. So uh, if you're going to do something like that, or I guess any kind of fabrication with aluminum, uh, pick yourself up one of this is a skill. But uh, you know Harbor Freight sells them and everybody else too. So yeah, definitely want to get one of these if you're doing any kind of fab work like that. So okay, that's it. That's it for now. Please like and subscribe.